But we are down to the final five. She is definitely serving you ice queen. I literally have a no note. know me my name is neon noir i'm a half italian half canadian drag queen and i am the brightest queen in the box if you're new here or if you haven't already done so go ahead and hit that subscribe button today we are playing my favorite game fab or drab where we rate the looks of drag race France, season three episode seven and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful and make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end where i let you know which looks had my fab and drab of the week this week we are down to the final five that is right uh, next week will be the grand finale so we are going to find out which of the last five remaining queens will make it into the finale this week's runway theme is hair couture where the queens must give us a look completely made out of hair so without further ado let's find out which queens shined bright and which faded into obscurity first up it's misty phoenix and misty phoenix is coming out in this sort of a dark look she's coming out with this corseted bodice with uh pointy shoulders and hair coming off of it she's also got hair coming down her dress and all the edges of the hair have a little bit of red she then paired it with really tall hair in this weird squiggly things to really give you a lot of height this is feeling a very villain but also very Mugler. I feel like this dress is referential and I've seen a version of this done, but this is done at such a high level. I love the whole vibe of the dress. It's really like horror, but like horror meets fashion and it definitely feels a very elevated and very expensive. As she walks, it also moves so beautifully because of the hair that just drizzles around. All in all, I literally have no notes and that is why I'm going to go ahead and give her a pop. Next up, we have a Ruby on the Nail, and Ruby on the Nail is coming out with this a red and orange dress made completely out of hair. Unlike Missy Phoenix, Ruby decided to do the whole dress out of hair and nothing but the hair. She's got this crisscross top piece that kind of looks like netting, but is all made out of hair. And then the bottom is also hair that dangles down. I think this is really interesting because she's somehow turned hair and made it look like fabric, which you know is super labor intensive. When these things look super simple, you know they're not. And the overall effect is just really interesting. The other thing that I really enjoy is that she's decided to stick with the, her red Ruby color i think this is such a good idea because uh, her name is of course ruby and we actually haven't seen her wear that much red all season long if my name was ruby i definitely would have done more of this almost like safira did with blue or nymphia did with yellow or what tina burner did with red orange and yellow i think ruby made a, a little bit of miss by not doing it all season but i love that on the finale she is coming into it and playing onto her theme the dress's downfall is that it looks so clean and elegant that it doesn't actually look that special but it just goes to show the craftsmanship that's put into it. Personally, I would have liked just a little bit more zhuzh put into that. And how I think I would have done that is by twofold, is adding some pieces of hair that had a little bit of tinsel in it so that it can shimmer just a little bit in certain areas. I think she would have done better with bigger breasts to give her more of a shape because now the dress just seems like it is flowing onto her, which is fine, but could have been more. All that being said, I think this is a very well done and a very strong ending for Miss Aruby and therefore still going to get a... Ah! Next up, it's Lulu Straga, and Lulu Straga is coming out in this a giant auburn orange red wig that wraps around her sort of a naked body. She's then paired it with polka dots boots, polka dot gloves, and this polka dot headpiece. Oh my god, when this comes out, it looks like she is floating in water, and the hair is just covering all of her bits. I love how big this hair is, and I love the contrast of colors, and it's also sticking with Lulu Straga's signature color of this orange ginger wig. I think this feels very her, but also feels very new and modern. We have seen this wig runway done many times on Drag Race, so it's hard to do something new. And most people tend to do a lot of hair and a lot of wigs. And to see somebody like Lula go in the opposite direction to give you almost like this nude illusion and then just have the hair very strategically is super super smart. It really plays against the grain, but still gives you the hair that you want to see. Now, if there was one thing that I would change is sort of the bodysuit, 
when you are doing a nude illusion bodysuit, it is very, very difficult because you have a tendency to see your undergarments and that's exactly what is happening here. You can see her corset, you can see her body underneath and that's kind of the part where I'm just like, I wish it was something else. And I think it would have helped had this been maybe like a different fabric to kind of just like cover it up or she probably needed to do a second layer of undergarments underneath. But that is the only comment to have. I love the black gloves and the black boots. It gives a little bit of contrast to the look and it just feels very fierce. All in all, I love the concept, love the idea, love the execution and definitely going to be a bow. Next up, it's Leona Winter, and Leona Winter is coming out in this blue hair dress. She's got all of the different shades in blue, the light blues, the dark blues, the royal blues, and even a little bit of white. She is definitely serving you Ice Queen. I love that she's playing on the fact that her name is Winter, and therefore she went in these blue tones. It kind of gives you that cold aspect, hence why I said Ice Queen. And the fact that she decided to go to blue, it actually makes it feel less like hair, which I'm kind of like really intrigued about, because once you look at it, there is a lot of hair. Blue is like not a natural color. Well unless you're me who only wears really bright colored hairs, but I am not a natural woman, so you know what I mean. But this really plays into her branding, really plays into her character. The overall vibe of this dress is definitely feeling very queen or priestess, but it's also giving me a little like Bob Mackie for Cher vibes, you know what I mean? The whole outfit is really well made, but do we expect anything else for Miss Leona Winter who has always been turning it up on these runways? Overall, this is excellent and definitely gonna be a bow. Next up, we have Le Philippe, and Le Philippe is coming out with this hair panties with the biggest blonde hair coming all the way down her back. This will give me a little bit of Victoria's Secret Supermodel meets Rapunzel meets Pamela Anderson. It is super sexy and super sleek. Le Philippe is lucky that she's very skinny and has a really great body because she's able to pull off some of these looks, which some of the other queens couldn't do and definitely had to like hide things. I know I have to cover everything just because otherwise I look too manly, but when you're able to show this much skin, you are able to play up the sex factor a lot. I think the bra and the panties are very cute, but it's just a pair of bra and panties with hair stuck on them. So I'm kind of like a little bit meh, but let's face it, this whole look is all about this giant hair wig that's coming down her back. It is the biggest thing I have ever seen. It's giving me a little bit of metamorphosis on the pit stop. The only thing that kind of bothered me is that I'm not sure if this is supposed to look like one wig uh, with hair coming all the way down her back, or is it supposed to look like wings? Because it clearly looks like she is holding them from her shoulders as opposed to on her head. I think it's supposed to be one giant wig, hence why they don't look like wings. I think it would have looked a lot better had she touched the, her wig into the back piece to really feel it, make it flow a little bit better. Overall, it's still a very striking look and there's still a very aha moment when she comes out and that's kind of what you want from a runway. So for this, for those reasons, I'm still gonna go ahead and give her a up. And that is it for this week's runway. What did you guys think? I think this was a very strong runway to end on. I love that each of the queens went in completely different directions, but all still served the theme. But I guess the real question is who had my fab and drab of the week? So who had my drab of the week? Well, my drab of the week this week goes to Nobody, I literally fabbed every single person's look and so I couldn't really choose a drab of the week when nobody had a drab. But that's what happens when you're this close to the finale and the queens are this strong. But enough about the negative, uh, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week goes to... Misty Phoenix. I love this dress. I think it's so cool. I think it's a little bit horror, but it's giving you fashion. It's really hitting all the things that I love, love, love about drag, and it is done in one outfit. So she got my fab of the week. Okay, y'all, that is it for this episode. What did you guys think? Do you agree or disagree with my thoughts? Well, let me know in the comments below. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Once and again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye-bye.